it's the shirts. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away like, now. Like what my are the, favorite shirts? What are the, just like shirts that you dictate? Like, no, you can only have these shirts. What are the what are the shir- what are the more popular shirts right now, Adam? That are that we're selling. Most popular? Yeah. What are the two top? Well, we just got oh, dude, the kettlebell. Look at, I don't look at those. Those. Why kettlebell you Mike. Yeah. Yeah. That's, How's kettlebell Mike going? That's probably uh, flying. What was the other one? Oh, the beer ones were going pretty. And the beer ones, the, beer yeah, ones, the ones that yeah. look like Heineken or like lift uh, responsibly. Lift yeah. responsibly. Yeah, the lift responsibly ones are probably. So, what's the retail on those shirts? Dude, you're gonna quiz me on this. They're like around twenty. They're like <laughs> around twenty five to twenty seven dollars. Twenty five. Doug's coming in. So twenty five to twenty seven bucks, you can have yourself a shirt, or you can get two of them. For like a dollar, right? Or under a dollar? Like 50 cents. Yeah, yeah, you can get two of them for that. And this is how Ooh. you do that. You enroll in the MAPS Super Bundle, which is the Cadillac of bundles. Includes all the MAPS programs, everything. <laughs> it's like a year's worth of exercise programming. Or you enroll in the MAPS uh, RGB Bundle, which is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, which is nine months of exercise programming. So you get one of those two, which they're already discounted. Mm. And then you can get two shirts for under a dollar. And they would be free, but our system doesn't let you do that, right, Doug? That's the deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they would be, they would, that's the, the freest we could give them. Yeah. The best yeah. I can do is 99% it's free-ish. off. Yes, you know? they're, they're yeah. 99% off. You, get, you could find that change on the ground somewhere, is yeah. what we're saying. You yeah. get two shirts for free ish. <laughs> for free ish. All you gotta do is enroll in one of those two bundles. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com and make a decision. To get in better shape, and I tell you what, if you if you buy one of those shirts and then you hashtag freeish, I'll throw you something else in free after you hashtag it. Hit me up in a DM there. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go: Mind Pump. Mind Pump with your hosts Sal De Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. I catch us now, um, or I catch myself, I should say. I'm, not, I'm evaluating myself. You catch like, yourself in the mirror and you yeah, think to yourself, yeah. "No, I, God damn!" But we, had, I feel like there's Angels been like have blessed. there's been like <laughs> phases of um, of the podcast. Fuck, 500 episodes is a lot, dude. There's not a lot of people that have done over 500 episodes. Yeah, of podcasting. It's funny when we meet it's other true. podcasters and they've been on air for like, oh, we've been on air for seven years, and you know, 200 episodes. I'm like, oh. oh yeah, we talk a lot. Yeah, you've, you've, so, you've been taking your time. I, it's it's come full circle for me of like being super uncomfortable to where we need to get high or drunk or like to calm the nerves down, right? <laughs> yeah. To now where you're so comfortable, and now it reminds me of like anything else that I've done where, you know, I catch myself where I'm like, oh, I'm getting too comfortable, mm-hmm. where I'm like almost this relaxed state, and part of I feel like you can hear that energy through the mic. Like you can mm. pick up on it some turns of, into monotone real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. And I, and that one of the things that I love like uh, about the chemistry between the three of us is that there there is all these different tones and humor and seriousness and like different energies. And when they're exaggerated, I think it creates a really cool dynamic. Mm-hmm. And you know, and some like I'm already like. I'll find myself sitting up to talk because that makes me like wake up more. Sure. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. So there's been little things that I've noticed that when, when I, I used to tell my sales guys to stand when they were on the phone. Yeah. I used to do Always. the same thing, dude. Always. Stand up for a little bit. You oh, you're hear, tired you, of calling 40 people in a row. Totally stand different up. energy. Yeah. yeah. And, and you can hear a smile. You can hear a smile on the other line. That's what <laughs> oh I would tell my them. God. <laughs> stand up and smile because they can hear it. You can hear <laughs> yeah. a smile. I feel dude, like that used to be a jingle. Dude, I, you know yeah. what? So on the we just recorded another episode earlier, and I was telling uh, we were telling gym stories, and I just remembered, I just remembered uh, some of the gym stories, some of the interesting things that would happen. So yeah. when I first became a manager, you guys uh, did did they sell when you were when you got into management, Adam? Were you guys selling Apex and personal training? Were they separate or was it? At that time, that it had it become, oh, you know, what? yeah, no, they were separate, but not just the supplements. It was like oh. the Apex program, oh, 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 and you had an Apex technician. There was that a certification in- that we had to do first, which was through Apex. Yeah, that was after they merged, though. There was oh, a time okay. when they were separated. When you had, two, so you I was had, behind. That you was guys. twenty. So uh, that was twenty four hour fitness. Twenty four hour fitness university. The last day we learned about Apex, and it was like a separate company uh-huh. that they had their own. They had their own like shirt and brand, and they used to come and talk at the Twenty Four Hour Fitness University. Yeah. So for- when I so when I first became a manager, the and I don't remember what year this was probably 90, 98, maybe ninety seven ninety eight. The we had an Apex technician in the gym that that dealt. So when people bought personal training and they bought Apex, they'd meet with their trainer. 
But then once a week, they would meet with the Apex technician who did their nutrition. Wow. And it was based on, and I know this all now. I don't know this then. So this is why you'll, you'll get the story. You know, do you, okay, go ahead. So, your story. Then we can talk so about how I, fascinating that is. On so I, I didn't know anything about it. I knew nothing about it. All I knew was, was Apex and nutrition mm-hmm. and personal training was personal training. Yeah. So my first month, we blow it out. I'm, I'm a uh, fitness manager. We blow it out, right? I think my goal was like 13 or 14 grand and- we did like 30 something, which was unheard of back then, right? So everybody's like, oh, you know, good job. And then the manager comes, the district manager comes in and sits down with me. He's like, hey, you guys are kicking ass. You've sold, you're at like 300% of goal of personal training. But for Apex, you're only like at 110. <laughs> he's like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, and he's like, well, why don't you, you know, why don't you sell more Apex? I said, okay. So the next month, we blew Apex out, right? Just crushed it. So the Apex people came down and were like, hey, we want you to, teach our people like what you're doing to sell apex mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. the, so i was like oh fuck because i don't know what apex is <laughs> so i told the guy i told the guy like i'm like i don't know like what apex is he goes he goes he goes what do you, he goes what do you mean what do you mean you don't know what apex is he's like you, you sold you just sold a record amount he's all you sold had. like seven thousand or whatever the number was like you you just broke records in apex sales he goes what do you mean you don't know what it is i'm like He's, I'm like, I don't know. I just know it's nutrition. <laughs> and I know you guys tell me to sell it. And I know people need nutrition. So I sell it to Apex. Do you remember when they used oh. to have- I remember that because the guy looked at me like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here? So back when they That's were separate, so they used to also sell them. Remember the starter kits that came? Of course I do. A $100 oh starter kit yeah. that used to- you, they used 50, to, I, had, I had like, it was just a bunch of supplements. Yeah, yeah, it, was. it was like yeah. a week's worth of multivitamins and antioxidants, a couple packs of protein just powder. essentials. Do you know, yeah. okay, yeah. now think of, a, think of that from a business strategy. Uh, I wonder what Mark was thinking. Mark Mastroff, it was the uh, owner, creator of 24. I wonder what he was thinking. What was, what was his initial strategy and what made him pivot to NASM because Apex Apex was still owned by 24 Hour Fitness but it was a, it was a they built it like a sister company no it got owned later at first they partnered but it wasn't owned it and was, then they got bought out by 24 and then they got bought out so it, Neil is, Spruce what right wasn't Neil Spruce the founder I think that's his name He's uh, NASM. Are you sure? Yeah, he's tied to NASM. Maybe he went to NASM. Oh, you're right. He did. You're yes, right. Yes. He was in. He was Neil, Apex. And Neil Spruce in. invented Apex, and what Apex was, it was a nutrition philosophy. We should Google that to make sure that sold. Yeah, check yeah. it out. I'm I'm almost positive, but yeah, look it up. Look up creator of Apex. Uh, uh, look up Neil Spruce uh, Apex. A- yeah, that'll be good. But yeah, he um he invented. This, Before we start quoting people's yeah, names and the yeah. he, <laughs> he invented yeah, this. Look up at my phone. That's wrong. If I'm right, if that's the actual guy or whoever it was, I think it was him. But they invented Apex, and it was this nutrition philosophy based on how some people respond better to diets that are higher in carbohydrates. And other people are better with higher proteins and less carbohydrates. And they did this through a questionnaire to figure out your the rate at which you oxidize food or whatever number. I think that's what the, that was the terminology they used, which is bullshit. But anyway, and they came up with this whole questionnaire and this whole sales process. And along with the nutrition program came supplements. Ooh, and what you would do oh, is you'd go in the there, you'd go in there, and the Apex Tech or whatever would give you a meal plan or give you several meal plans, and yeah, it is. See, Neil Spruce. He Now he has Dot .fit, which is his new company it's he right. started. I remember and, that. And so what Apex, the goal with Apex was he would sell it to gyms. So he'd go to gyms, like Gold's Gym, because there was a lot of gyms that had Apex. It wasn't just 24 Hour Fitness. There were Gold's Gyms that had it. Yeah. And he'd go in and he would say, I have this program and the system that will sell supplements. And it's a nutrition program with all these systems. And it's going to be great. It'll grow your personal training business, whatever. And so these gyms would adopt Apex and they'd pay for it. And I know because I had a wellness facility and we were going to include Look right here, right here. Look at this right here. here. With Apex, Spruce and his team developed fitness programs using over 1,500 fitness facilities worldwide, serving over half a million new participants annually. Yeah. Yeah, they were, damn, they were so... That's a lot, dude. Yep, yep. So, so uh, he was part of the body bug creation too. Uh, yes, body yeah. bug was created by them. Ooh, because I like you're mentioning that with Apex, and I remember distinctively when that became a thing when body bug came in and and they started like showing like teaching us in some of these courses, and then we finally had access to them in our clubs. And we murdered that. Remember, yeah. we ran. Yeah. Well, they were. We brilliant. ran a competition amongst the trainers. Yeah. To not only get all your clients to have one, but now we're going to put that and, and, you know, test our numbers mm-hmm. and, and make a competition out of it. it. 
and we just killed it. I'll tell you what about Neil Spruce. Definitely a one of the the like, geniuses in fitness. He was very smart in a lot of different things that he did. Yeah, in a lot of his he approaches. Was very forward thinking. Very very forward thinking. Well, but, dude, Dot, and his company now. I don't even know exactly what it does. I know just I know Dot people, Fits Apex. It's the same. It's what Apex did. It's it's the same similar thing. Supplements, whatever he designs it for a health club model. Again, I know because they were getting they were trying to get me to get Dot Fit into my. Mm-hmm. facility oh no way so that's what they do yeah so it's basically a nutrition program system with uh supplements that you can sell in your facility so as a business owner as a gym owner you're looking at it and you're thinking oh i'm gonna you know and look see the four pillars of fitness what they use doesn't uh, that sound oh my a God. lot like the five components of fitness that's so uh, great yeah. yeah yeah so the whole oh by the way um apex was really early on talking about post uh, exercise uh, supplementation. Oh yeah, they went into that real quick. Oh yeah, because there were a couple studies that showed improved glycogen, you know, uptake or what you know, uh, mm-hmm. replenishment or whatever. So, well, this is what pretty fascinating stuff. But yeah, I sold the shit at Apex. I had, yeah, no, idea. Yeah. I had no idea what it was. Yeah, that's so- <laughs> oh, it kills that's, me. That's it's so, so great. Yeah. Well, it makes me wonder though, what made him go? Uh, what made him get rid of it? Like they got rid of Apex because Twenty Four Fitness owns it, and yeah. I think there was a there was a clause that he couldn't do another company for so many years. And when that clause was over, boom, he started dot fit. Similar to how Mark uh, Masteroff went off and did UFC gyms at the five. It was literally on the five year uh, like birthday, literally. Like he he wasn't allowed. To it was. Open I, gyms I remember when the years. rumors were going around that it was going to happen, and then like on the day, it wasn't premeditated was so, at all. That was what was so yeah. gangster. Dude. It was yeah. like day one, I'm back, motherfuckers, and yeah. UFC, and he a- comes out and announces on TV that I'm I'm partnering up with Dana White, Dana White, Mark Mastroff. We're going to create these UFC Super gyms. Super smart. And I remember yeah. being like, oh yeah. shit, look out, watch him come. I think Twenty Four Fitness was. At all at the same time was it pioneered the gym bi- business and then mm. it fucked the gym business. Yeah, I think it pioneered it because they were, they were really the first ones, not the first ones, but the best ones and the first ones to really do it well. well they were the standard to make like to, to turn it into like a big time money producing worldwide business. Yeah. But then they fucked the business when they when their strategy became about selling cheaper and cheaper memberships to try and beat their competition. Then everybody's prices got well. This up. is and now they, they're just all. It's an example. Sh- God, I can't remember what book this reminds me. Of. It's you know the business grows so fast and so rapidly that it can't keep up with itself, right? Yeah. So it's I'm watching the same thing happen in Orange Theory right now. So I'll, that's why I can give you guys predictions. And I've been telling anybody that owns them or any friends of mine that are in them, and they are like all fascinated by them right now that. Eventually, what will happen is that market will get saturated. Enough people, enough smart business fitness people will see that. Oh, look, there's the model. You know, buy a three to five thousand square foot space, create group classes that target you know that are that targets resistance training and cardio in the same place. Do membership base very mm-hmm. similar. To, it's like CrossFit. CrossFit has the same Add business a heart model. rate monitor. Yeah, it's a br- it's a brilliant ready. it's a brilliant model, but it'll become oversaturated. And then when that happens, the trainer fees will go down, the membership prices will go up. It'll get shittier. Like. So I've told anybody that's in those. God, fitness is such a fad driven industry. Isn't it's it? well, and it's, it's when so you, fad you've been driven. In it, when you've been in it long enough, it's really it's easy to like see uh, these indicators, and that's why too. Like I don't even like when people like get in arguments with me over. I'm just like, okay, you could be right. Maybe this is the thing that stays forever. Yeah. I doubt Everybody's it. Everybody's <laughs> jogging now. I doubt yeah. it. Well, what you makes know. me laugh is when I watch the infomercials on TV when they'll pop up. And it'll it'll come out like this new invention, and it's a it's a an ab wheel or yeah. uh, electric stem, yeah. which has been around for like sixty years, a million years. Yeah, and they'll yeah. they'll show it like it's this new thing. Wear this belt. I'm still stomach, waiting for makes- that like belt thing that like shakes the shit out of you. You know, you step yeah. inside it. Oh, they'll sell it differently. Blah, 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 blah. They'll sell yeah. it differently. Yeah, yeah, it'll be. Who knows? There may actually be some benefit. There's a study plate. that comes out. I think there already are some of those <laughs> tools still. Sur- they're still s- selling shit like that. It's out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's out there. Definitely. Where's the bird? <laughs> Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Fit by Fabian. Thoughts on cardio and weight loss, but more specifically, fasted cardio. Is it overrated and an old school approach to getting shredded? 
So <clears throat> this is a great debate. And on one side, you have the, the you know, scientists, uh, fitness people who say it doesn't matter at all. It's, it's totally stupid and it doesn't make any difference. And then the other side of it, you have all these coaches and trainers uh, and competitors who say, no, it makes a big difference. And I can tell when I do it, uh, when I do cardio fasted. And then there's the science. Uh, and the science actually shows that you may get uh, increased maybe fat oxidation with fasted cardio uh, because insulin is low and all that stuff. And But in the big scheme of things, is it going to make a difference? No. I mean, maybe if you're like 3% body fat um, in terms of fat loss, it might make a little difference that you could see. But I don't even know if it's enough to really to really matter because if you're so tired because you're so fasted, it might be better to have food and then do your cardio. Now, that all being said, activity fasted period or just being fasted right. is kind of a great state to be in mm. when it comes to fat That's loss. That's a different topic. Yeah, yeah, because I think people who do fasted cardio maybe end up fasting longer in the morning. So, yeah. so let me tell you exactly right. how I used to do this with myself and then any athletes I got ready for a show. Is I talked about, I would add the hit, right? That was my first source of cardio that would get, I implement into their, and then after they've gotten seven days where I've prescribed them doing this 12, this little 12 minute hit, the next thing after that would be these fasted cardio. But when I would do fasted cardio, it's a walk. So all I'm really asking you to do is to get up an hour earlier than what you've really done to move more steps. And what I found when I went through that process, it's not about the difference in, oh, does fasted cardio versus fed cardio because you know you're going to be able to do more later in the day versus in the early morning. None of that mattered to me because if I wasn't getting up an hour earlier to do fast cardio, I would be sleeping in bed and just getting up and making my body move for an hour. I was going to burn way more calories and then I just kept it fasted so I wouldn't have any extra source of fuel or any sugar to burn. Mm -hmm. So I'd be just sit. I know I'd be making more steps, burning more calories and turn more than likely burning more fat. So the, the, my theory on that was if you, if you're somebody who like likes to do in the afternoon cardio and then you don't to switch it to getting up earlier in an hour and being tired as fuck, like that doesn't really matter. But if you're someone who's like me, who I'm not going to do an hour of cardio in the middle of the day. Like I just don't, I do shorter bouts in the middle of the day, or I make a session about just moving uh, or go on a hike or something, but I can't just, I don't like to just in the middle of the day do an hour of cardio. So in the morning I'll be half asleep, put a book or easy listening music and just walk, you mm -hmm. know, and walk for an hour. Yeah. I think, um, you know, as far as just straight fat loss is concerned, I don't think it, I don't think it's something that makes it. Be, I mean, on, on the list of priorities, it's way down at the bottom. In terms of uh, you know some of the potential health benefits, they're definitely there. I mean, if you're in this for longevity and health, I'll tell you what: doing cardio in a fasted state may help your body become more fat ad uh, fat adapted in the sense that you may be more. You may accelerate the process at which you utilize fat for fuel. Mm -hmm. So, which is not, which is a good thing. It's good to have your body go into ketosis every once in a while and come out of it. And you want to have that metabolic flexibility. So, if you yeah. wake up in the morning, let's say your last meal is at eight o'clock at night, you wake up and you do cardio, you know, at uh, seven a.m. I mean, that's a over twenty hour, you know, or you know, fast or whatever. Excuse me, over twelve hour fast. Um, uh, you know, doing cardio in that state could promote, uh, you know, faster fat adaptation. And I think it's good, you know, if people are, if you're the type of person that like won't do it, absolutely won't do it because, you know, you get sick to your stomach or, you know, you, I always have to eat something before I do any kind of movement. Like you need to train your body to be able to, to go through that process and to be able to respond when, like you're very capable of moving when you don't have food in your stomach. You know? right. Like you, you can overcome those. That's a great point. That is um, a great point. Yeah. Like that, that response, like I've just heard that excuse so much where, you know, like I used to think that. Yeah. I used to think if I didn't eat, I would crash in my workout. First mm -hmm. time I fasted and worked out, my mind was so blown that not only did I have plenty of energy, I actually felt better. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure I would crash. I haven't had any carbs today. I haven't had any protein. It's kind of mind blowing for some people. Yeah. It's it was fucking mind blowing, and you know that's a great point because if we look at the body as an adaptation machine, consider all the things that your body uh, gets stronger through adapting towards. So I'll use an example that's not uh, what we're talking about. So we had recently we had uh, Paul Check in the studio. And he was talking to us about temperature contrast hmm. and why, you know, going from a super hot sauna 
and then going in freezing cold water is good for the body. Now, the way Paul explained it, and I, I know what the science says. The science, luckily, nowadays we have the science that shows it is good for you. But 15 years ago, that didn't exist. But he'd been doing it for a while. And he said, look, he goes, your blood vessel's ability to dilate and constrict, okay, and your reaction to heat and cold come from the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems of the body. And he goes, and the reason why you start to get better at acclimating to cold or hot after doing hot, cold uh, contrast training is your body's getting stronger at it. You're training that adaptation, which is a good thing. It's, it's good it makes to Makes a have, lot of sense. And yeah. Because think about it. We evolved you know, with lots of temperature contrast. It was freezing at night and it was hot during the day. Uh, now we're in this temperature controlled environments all the time. We don't train that quote unquote muscle anymore. Right, we and turn so, the AC on. And so, of course, and now we have the studies to show if you do temperature contrast training, it is very healthy for your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, every study shows it's very, very healthy and cultures have been doing it for thousands of years. So thinking about exercising on an empty stomach along those lines, like if you never do it and you go work out and you feel nauseous and, oh, I get lightheaded, that you may have, you may need to train that adaptation mm-hmm. and you may benefit from it. So I don't know if it necessarily you know, is better for fat loss, but my belief system is if your body gets better at adapting, it gets better at, you know, it gets healthier and stronger. Yeah. I, Overall, I, it might, right? I think it's, it just goes back to the decision we said about whether you would, when you're more likely to do it. Because really, I am for sure the guy who says all the time that, man, I want to get up like an extra hour, two hours before I need to get up. And, you know, have a cup of coffee, go for a while. I actually did this today. So funny we're talking about this. Uh, This is how I would like to do this is get, you know, I got up about an hour and a half before I even need to come in here. And, you know, I got up, I walked the dogs, and then I went on a walk by myself while I was drinking a cup of coffee. And it was just this nice way of waking up. Now, I don't normally do that. But if I was getting ready for my show and competing and I knew I needed to shred body fat, like I had, I have a schedule to be ready for this show every day. I need to be leaning out every day. I need to be leaning out me simply making myself get up and just walk every single morning. I added so much more calorie expenditure in my day that that made a huge difference. And then if I were to add anything to that, I would add, like I said, the hit Mm -hmm. cardio sessions later on at post-workout. Well, what's funny is just speaking for me personally, and I know several (laughs) people like this, I prefer all my workouts fasted. I do not like eating before mm-hmm. I work. If I eat before I work out, it's got to be hours before. Because if it, even if it's just one and a half, two hours before, I notice I'm more bogged down and I don't have as much energy and stamina. I could totally, yeah. Like that, that was never the case for me ever until like the last couple of years, like the last two years maybe. And uh, it, it's just for me like to to go from not eating pre, pre-workout was just such a – <laughs> like that took a lot of mental uh, ability for me to, to 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 do that. Like the first one, I was like, "There's no way I can make it through it." Like it was ingrained in my head. That yeah, it I took me a that. long time to do the same yeah. thing. It was. It took me a long. It was. This happened during this process that we were all together too. Mm. I wasn't. I would never. I remember in our first episodes, you would say that. Yeah, you need to eat like an hour. Yeah, before. I and I would feel that way, and I would and I would play with like one workout. So I actually had to go for a while of doing that on a pretty regular basis before I got adapted. So when Justin just brought that point up, that is a really good point because it's and even just doing it one time is not enough. I had to actually train myself to kind of get used to that process and be able to control my hunger like that. And it was a, a big hurdle for me once I got over it. Now, now I'm the opposite. I'm now the guy who used to say, oh, I have to have at least 300 grams of carbs because I was. I was oh, I, competing days, I need at least 300 grams before I even get to the, I, to the I gym. I remember you saying that. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I was doing 550, 600 grams of carbs you know, in a day. So I needed all that. I felt like that in order for me to get this full workout and have energy where- It just seems like no matter where you look and no matter where you turn, uh, what making the body stronger and last longer has to do with getting it to adapt to different types of stresses. Mm-hmm. And that means that you have to apply the stresses in the right amount with the right intensity because if you overapply it, it overcomes your body's ability to and adapt. phase out of them. Yeah, you get sick or whatever. So this is everything, right? Temperature contrast, working out when you're, you know, when you haven't eaten. Um, it could do, I, I think it has to do with food intake, water intake, like sun exposure. Like being too comfortable with everything is, I mean, it looks like across the board is bad. It's a good idea to probably have a little bit of, you know, these types of stresses. And I think exercise happens to be one of them. So from a, like, if you go comparison to comparison, uh, you know, like Adam said, whichever one you prefer, go for it. But, you know, we're just kind of breaking down. It may be good for you to do that every once in a while. Right. Yeah. S. Daddario. 
can you talk about proper sodium intake? Is the recommended 2,300 milligrams correct, or have we been misled? Do you know why? You know what I love about this? How come they haven't changed that? Is it still on there? Oh, dude, they're going to change it. Oh, they will. They're going to change it. You know what I love about this? Like dietary facts. We talked about this a this long is, time ago. This is, everything. This is one more. It's actually the whole fucking thing we were sold. Like the whole paradigm we were sold Yeah. for what makes you healthy and unhealthy, right? Right. We were told avoid fat. High fat, yeah. Avoid Diets. fat, especially saturated avoid fat. Avoid salt. Avoid cholesterol salt. like crazy. Yeah. Don't eat cholesterol and eat a low sodium diet. Those are like the big, like, don't eat those. Those things right there yeah. will kill you if you have those. I mean, that was what we were taught, the right? For murderers. We yeah. are now learning that not only was that advice wrong completely. It's upside down. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad advice. The sodium one is a very, very interesting one. So they've done a couple huge meta analysis of all these different studies. So a meta analysis is when they take several studies, because you can find some, like you can get two different studies that come out with two different outcomes, right? So what you try and do is you try and collect a bunch of them and look at what the trends are so you can kind of tease out the truth. Because sometimes it's the sample size and it could be other factors that maybe aren't, aren't factored in. So when you look at the whole picture, you get a you typically you could expect a clear more clear picture. So they did a huge meta analysis of these studies that with a total of about sixty two hundred subjects, and they found and this is in, this was published in the American Journal of Hypertension, no strong evidence that cutting salt reduces the risk for heart attacks, strokes, or death in people with normal or high blood pressure. Wow. In, uh, and then in the Journal of American Medical Association reported that the less sodium that the study subjects had was a, it was actually a measure uh, of showing that they would have a greater risk of dying of heart disease. It's mm -hmm. actually the fucking opposite. Dude. Trip off of that shit. Now let me right tell there. you. Oh, now let me tell you opposite. something that you're when you've been told this for a really long time, <laughs> and then you hear this on Mind Pump for the first time. Let me tell you the first struggle or hurdle you ha will have trying to get beyond this way of thinking is water does pair with sodium. And when you increase, go and increase your sodium intake, if you've, you, you're used to eating 2,000 because you were scared of salt for so long, then all of a sudden you double or triple it because you heard on Mind Pump, go for it. Don't be surprised when you hold some water yeah, weight, you know, routine especially water. in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. So that's totally fine. That's totally healthy. It's not fat. Yeah. Because that's what people will think of that. Like, oh my God, the scale went up two pounds. Yeah. Sal told me to have more sodium. <laughs> Fuck you. Not only that. That's happening. It's not working. Yeah. Not only that, but most of the water that you that you be holding will be in your muscle, not outside your muscle. Yeah. So remember this. Most of your muscle, if you look at your muscle size, most of it is, is, is water. Mm -hmm. It's not muscle fiber. A lot of it's water. So if you're this all of a sudden why. having a little more muscle, water in your muscles, you know what you're going to look? More muscular, yeah. your muscles are gonna look more toned and tight and, and full. Up. I've experienced this myself. Well, I've this is the this is the competitive trick. Okay, most competitors didn't know this. Like I'd be listening to them, they're like, "Oh yeah, my my coach is looking at me." Then he tells me I get to have a cheat meal night. Well, it's that sodium load right. the night before, and the little bit of water they have left in their system, and it just fills up their mus muscle bellies, makes their skin look tighter. It's not the magical fat inside the, well, the cheeseburger. Well, isn't it too? I mean, why we are a little bit cautious is to like you know have people like add and include more sodium in their diet is because we started to look at preservatives and the way that all these packaged processed foods like carry so much of it already uh in addition to then adding it into well the this diet. is a good point to make too because where you're getting your sodium right and yeah where, like, what, well, kind, that's what, you, what the content of the sodium is well like, that's what that's what you have to tease out right yeah. if you look at people with the highest sodium t intake they also eat the most processed shitty food right so what you have to do is tease that out. It's not the sodium that's causing the problem. No. Basically, what these meta-analysis studies are showing is that low sodium is way worse for you than high sodium. Now, they're not saying high sodium is great for you. What they're saying is eating a lot of sodium, probably not a big deal. Maybe not ideal. I'm sure at some point it's not good for you, right? Uh, maybe not ideal. But what's worse for you is low sodium. Well, can you mention too, like with Himalayan salt and like what options there are as far as like your best options for salt? Well, salt found typically in, in natural sources is accompanied by minerals and mineral and certain mineral profiles. And regular table salt is scrubbed of all that. Mm -hmm. It's they they remove everything and just leave the sodium. So when you eat with that type of salt, it can actually rob your body of certain nutrients. Now you'd have to eat a shit ton of it for that to happen. But basically, I mean, the gist of it is this. If you're going to eat sodium anyway, if you're going to throw salt on food anyway, like I do, mm -hmm. you're better off opting for 
salt that's got better mineral profiles. Like I love Himalayan sea peak salt. salt. Yeah. Um, certain sea salts uh, a little bit better. What's that? Black uh, salt. Uh, black salt's actually colored. I learned that about the other day. It's oh, not it a is? real. Oh, yeah. Son of a bitch. It's like marketing. Yeah. Um, but you know, natural salts have uh, more minerals in them. So I'm already going to put salt on my food. I might as well. You know, have I, I would tell clients if they were salting it themselves with choice, good choice like that, to have a hay day, go for it. Go to town. Yeah. Like you really would be surprised. If you on, have the whole food, but you're you're packing the salt on top. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you're, you're eating whole, if you're, yeah, if you're eating whole food and you're controlling the the salt, don't even worry about measuring it. I'm like, enjoy yourself. If you want, if you like salt on that, put salt on that. Yeah. But if where you got to be careful because what people don't realize is the amount of salt in the processed foods. Because if you go somewhere out, eat out. Eat right away because they have to preserve that food. Uh, thousands of milligrams. Oh yeah, it's like have. quadruple. It'll, it'll go away from you. Oh, real it's quick. it's quadruple any any meal you any whole food meal that you could dump salt all over. Mm-hmm. Like it's literally that much of a difference. So yeah, it, when, what you got to consider is that uh, sodium is uh, essential. Salt is essential for the body. So having too little of it is can be quite bad. It can be very very dangerous. It can cause problems. And here's a crazy statistic here. If you're an athlete, you'd better not watch your salt. If you sweat and you yeah. work out a lot, mm. if you watch your salt intake, you are you could be setting yourself up well, for this is the danger. some danger. This is the dangerous part that happens to like competitors because they start cutting <laughs> some of these dumb coaches. This was the stuff that I was bodybuilders have died on stage. Well, there's or right after a competition. There's a lot of these hydrated. there's a lot of these coaches out there that don't understand what they're doing when they're trying to reduce salt and they tell these competitors, I've gotten multiple clients that had coaches before before they got coached by me t- tell them to cut their salts like their whole prep so like their whole prep they're like not they're using all that fake fucking da- That's crazy. dash crazy meanwhile shit. they're doing cardio they're sweating yes they're, i mean they're training I mean, their the ass same. they're training their ass off heading heading into oh, you mean flavor god yeah, that type yeah, of shit. Yeah, not even re- not even real stuff. They're they're throwing out their seasoning because they think they can't have soda. God forbid. Yeah, you have any salt. Unbelievable, dude. For yeah. eight, ten, twelve weeks at a time. Fucking unreal. Yeah, no. If you're an athlete, in fact, when I train athletes, uh, sometimes I'd have actually I would have them, especially runners, I'd have them take a pinch and of sea salt in their water. and put it in their water. Yeah, I'd do the same. I mean, if you're an athlete, salt up, man. Yeah. Salt your food. Do if you're that sweating instead a lot, instead of Gatorade. Yeah, yeah you'd, be, you'd, be, you're, you'd be stupid to watch your sodium intake or to keep it low if you're an athlete, unless you're specifically directed to by a doctor. J. Thomas N., what are your thoughts on vaccinations? Whoa. <laughs> We you sure you want to talk? Oh, about that bro, third rail, I, you uh, did. You want you, you want to go here? Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Jeez. You know why? You know why I want to. That's go up here? there with the big three, man. You know why I want to uh, go there because uh, w- this is actually like the fifteenth time. I have no yeah. say in this. Someone I do, has asked I do not have my, a child. My wife is passionate I, about this. Topic. Oh, I bet, yeah. dude. I yeah. bet she. So is. here's a here's a th- first off. I can't wait to hear Justin's opinion. First off, I want to be very very clear on two things. Very very clear on my opinion on two things. Number one, and this is an this is yes, this is my opinion, but I could debate this all day long. The vaccine is one of the greatest uh, medical breakthroughs right. in human history, yeah. period. Nothing, no medical breakthrough has, uh, has uh, saved more lives than the vaccine. Now, one of the reasons why vaccines are so easily demonized is because they're preventative. And what I mean by that is let's imagine if antibiotics were not uh, given to you after you got sick. Imagine if you had to take them as preventative mm, that's a great medicines. Point. Yeah. They would be vil- they would be vilified more so than vaccines because actually uh, antibiotics are actually much more dangerous. The reason why we love antibiotics is because you get sick, you take one, you get better. Yeah. With the vaccine, you don't get something and then get a vaccine and get better. You take it and you get nothing. So it's we don't see the millions and millions of dead bodies or sick people. I mean, it wasn't that long. People don't realize this. It was like a few generations ago, well, not that long ago, where. People would fucking die of shit that doesn't even exist anymore all the time, mm-hmm. like polio. We had a president who had polio, and then you know we had he was crippled as a result of it. Like that happened all the time. Imagine yeah. as a as a parent of a kid. God, parents nowadays wouldn't survive with a polio outbreak. Oh How big God. a pussy's there? Yeah. You, you know, send your kid to school knowing that. You know, we had Ebola that infected four people and people were freaking out. Imagine yeah. if it was, <laughs> right. you know, something Everybody like polio, which, home. Effect, yeah. which affected a large percentage put a whole town it out. <laughs> of the population. Yeah. So vaccines are uh, definitely a godsend. Yeah. Uh, the second thing that I want to be uh, very clear with, with vaccines, is I don't think, and this is my opinion, I don't think anybody should ever be forced hmm. 
mm. to have a vaccine. And yeah, you're just nailing all my points. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anybody should ever be forced to have anything. Yeah. So I, I don't trust. Here's the problem. I don't trust uh, forcing anybody to do things to the body. Number one, it's morally wrong to force anybody to do something with their body. And number two, I don't trust uh, our government to decide what we should be forced to do with our bodies. Mainly, and not because I think the government's evil, but because they're always fucking wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, what we could be forced to do now, you know, 15 years from now, oh, oops, we realize, you know, here's a problem with that or whatever. Plus, some of the stuff the government's done, look up the Tuskegee experiments where they were in, in, infecting, you know, uh, black prisoners with syphilis just to see what would happen. I mean, there's some crazy shit that they've done. Like, I don't fuck, no, fuck you. There's no force on anybody. Right. Uh, but if you are a business... Or you should also have the privilege, the the the, the right to sit, put people, a sign on your door. People should have a choice. You can't come in yeah. if you're not vaccinated. So yeah, and, that's that. But yeah, like like Sal's mentioning, it's it's tough because you, you know it. Like knowing what these vaccines and the science behind them, and how how like massively beneficial they are to us, and to to stave off these old diseases that. I mean, is is pretty ridiculous that you see things like measles and you see these things kind of making a comeback just because of people's, um, you know, preferences to you know not not vaccinating or vaccinating. But at the same time, as frustrating as that is, that's their choice, you know. And and so for me, it's it. I, I would rather have that be the standard that people like in their kids like they they can have the choice to do this to prevent these things. Um, it's just, <laughs> you just feel that they're stupid for making that choice. But at the same time, you know, like it, like there's a distrust and, and government has proven itself to, um, you know, cause the, the fact that there's like a, a, a mistrust of, of a lot of these handlings. Well, and things, so. science isn't always right, you no. know, and there's certain things we don't know to look at. And I will say this about vaccines. I'm not pro all vaccines. Okay, so here's the other side of, of me now. <laughs> I'm going to piss everybody off as usual, right? All right. Um, when I was a kid, we got, you know, like a few vaccines. We got, you know, a few shots and then you were done. Mm -hmm. Today, it's there's a ton now, right? Well, so uh, there are now 49 doses of 14 vac uh, vaccines by the age of six Wow. today. When we were kids, we would get, I think, eight shots, uh, eight or something like that total. So now they're getting 49 by the time they're six. So, and they're for all kinds of things, things that we grew up with, like chicken pox and stuff like that. And they want to do flu vaccines all the time, right? Dude, I don't even want a kid. I don't now, want this response. Now here's, I don't even want to think the, about the this. The flu stuff. vaccine <laughs> is... Uh. Well, here, and here's the thing. Not all vaccines are created equal. No. Some I could see being like big deal. Others like, okay, not that big of a deal. And they haven't been around that long. And can we make mistakes? Yes. Yeah. And can your immune system actually like? Can you just train your immune system for once and, and to, to get that to kick in and be you know the priority and stave off these these illnesses like the flu? Or do I have to get a shot all the time? Well, see, that's what they'll say. They'll say this is training the immune system. But you know, uh, for me, it's almost like, and I know the science. Okay, I get it. This is just my skeptical side. Mm. You're ask, you know, you're asking the, the body to uh, become immune or whatever through a much bigger process now to a lot more things, there is a, a, a there is a reaction to a vaccine. If you have a child, you'll know when, you, when they get a vaccine, it's not uh, it's not out of the ordinary for them to get a fever or act mm -hmm. irritable afterwards yeah. because it's their immune system activating, right? It's causing an immune system reaction. Well, you do that a whole bunch of times and we, you know, the immune system, we don't know a lot about the immune system. We think we do, but we're learning new stuff all the time. Like the microbiome was something that we knew nothing about 15 years ago. Now we know it's this major player and all these different things. So I, that's where I could see the fear and I can understand that. Yeah. Like, so for me, I'm a, I'm a little bit picky and choosy with my vaccines. I know, I know there's doctors listening that are getting pissed off with that, but yeah. And I, and I kind of caution cause like, I know my wife's more, more on the medical side cause that's like where she's coming from. Whereas I'm a little more cautionary because I always feel like do you guys I, I want to expose a little bit. Oh, little, you guys so, do. Uh, oh, wow. Just a little bit. Not, not like, not like I'm I'm trying to prove her wrong or I'm 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 listening to her her thought process with that and then also like she's not really big on mandating like so she doesn't want to have to get a flu shot all the time or her work like forces her to get like a flu shot all the time and, oh wow yeah and because that that's one of those things I'm like I mean I I I know that like there's been really bad seasons of the flu 
And, uh, you know, I, I've, I didn't get a shot. I never get a shot. And, um, she's getting a shot. She's getting sick and, and it's happened multiple times where she gets the flu and I did not. And, mm-hmm. and so it's just, it's just interesting because it's, you know, obviously probably, I mean, probably not connected to the shot, but connected to the fact no, that you just have a better immune system. Just the immune system part that yeah. like in, and it's the same thing with being exposed to germs and, you know, people that are always like cleaning, like super like hypochondriac, like cleaning all the time and not, not really immersing it, like getting their hands dirty even, you know, like people are afraid to get their hands dirty. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. They were so like such pussies. It's, you know, and also <laughs> remember it's, it's super easy to scare people. It's very hard to unscare them, especially yeah. when it comes to kids. Like, you know, there can be an article, an alarmist article that comes out that says, you know, pacifiers linked to, you know, I don't know, uh, sudden infant death syndrome or something like that, right? Oh, yeah. And then it could come back and be like, oh, my God, the, the data was wrong. We totally messed up. But all the people forever that have that- Forever that's tainted. For, yeah. Forever, forever. It's tainted. And well, it's you, just like I told you about this the sodium thing. We just answered that question, and I'm like, I already know what happens. Like, would even people know- like the the truth, they've heard it before. This may, this may not be the first time they've heard the whole sodium talk before, but I bet you there's a ton. I bet you there's thousands of people that are listening right now that try to take that advice and start intake, uh, increasing their intake of sodium and saw an increase in weight and probably backed right off right away and be like, oh, I don't no, care how smart not those for me. Are. Yeah, not for me. <laughs> He's like, my body told me no because I yeah. gained weight right away. Well, it, the thing with the thing with stuff with your kids in particular is like I'm a parent, right? Uh, I can be so paranoid about myself or whatever. Multiply it times a million. That's what happens with your kid. And if I'm going to do something for my kids or give them something and someone puts that doubt in me or that fear, the second guessing starts to kick in. Like, yeah, like I, I my kids get, you know, most vaccines. Right. Uh, there's some that I and I'm not, not going to go over that on air because I don't want to be responsible for someone. Yeah. You know, doing the same Good. thing I'm doing. Good. But, you know, I, you know, I remember my son got a vaccine. And then I got a fever and was crying. Mm-hmm. And immediately I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, what if all those, you know, conspiracy theories, what have oh, I done? I well, and you feel like, you know, f- you know, it's it's easy to scare people. It's hard to not scare them. And then it's easy to make these connections because most kids are vaccinated. Yeah. So now you've got most kids are vaccinated. Maybe there's this, maybe it's the microbiome that's thrown off and we've got all these food allergies, right? Which is probably what it is. But it's not hard to connect that, right? Because yeah. all these kids are also vaccinated. So, it's like, oh, it's the vaccines that must be doing hmm. it. Oh, it's the amount of vaccines. Oh, it's the additives in there. So, well, and it's, I mean, it's big business. You yeah. Know? It's big business That's the other to, thing. To, to pump the, that out and get it in Walgreens. And, you know, everybody's getting in on that. And this was a heavy topic on our forum just not that I long I know. Ago. People yeah. were debating it. That's why I was surprised you wanted to go I there. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a we're t- going to get a lot of comments for uh, this one. You know, yeah. it's a tough one it, just because and I, I think that's the right answer, though. I mean, being a guy that doesn't have any kids, so I, I feel like I have no real say in this because I feel like you first have to have kids first i feel like that you have to know what that feels like as a parent and have to think about that choice because it's not your life like i could talk about i i don't do the flu shot i haven't i've never done the flu shot so yeah i i i I choose not to now uh just for my own personal reason now if i had a child i i might do a little bit more research like you guys probably have in that arena to know that um yeah, this is something I'm not. I gotta think about this one, or maybe I'll do that well, so, one and this one, but well, not that one. Well, like, so I've never whole, even had to think about that. Well, the whole argument is if if everybody's vaccinated, there's more herd immunity, and it reduces the rate of infection for everybody because sometimes vaccines don't work. Mm-hmm. They don't always work on everybody, so you can get va- a, a vaccine for something. Yeah. Well, not even just a new strain. Maybe your immune system didn't fully, you know, react to it. So you may be vaccinated against the measles, but for whatever reason you may actually get it. Maybe you didn't mm. get your booster, maybe your immune system to take to it, whatever. Mm. So they say it's better for everyone to be vaccinated. But I tell you what, man, uh, here's a, there's two sides to this. Number one, you've got the people who, ref- who say f- refuse vaccines, but then they get pissed off and sue schools and stuff like that for not taking their kids in. You can't have it both ways. Like you have a right to not vaccinate your kid and they have a right to tell you to fuck off. It's a private business. Mm-hmm. Like you can't have both. Right, so both of you guys have your rights. Yeah. Uh, and number n- number two, as far as the you know forcing, allowing the government. By the way, the government has force. They can throw people in jail. They can. They're the only legal ent- entity that can kill you if they wanted to, if they had to, if they thought they had a reason. They can do all these things. Giving them the power to force us to do anything is very dangerous. And you're crossing a line already. They can steal. They can already steal your money through taxes, which is force. Right. You don't pay your taxes. You go to jail. But we've all accepted that. But right now, government can't force you to eat a certain way or live a certain way 
But the second we cross that line now where they yeah, where, it where they can start giving you shit and doing stuff to you, yeah. you got to be very careful because we don't always have the best politicians running <laughs> shit. You get some crazy motherfucker running shit. Uh, you know, I don't trust them. Or we get in some Cold War scenario like we were before where they're going to, I mean, during the Cold War, the U.S. government did a lot of crazy shit because they thought it's either we do this crazy shit or we could have nuclear fallout, which kills everyone. So they made some crazy ass decisions. Mm-hmm. If we enter a situation like that and we've already given them the power to force stuff into us, you never know. They might force, uh, you know, in certain the vaccines that, you know, sterilize people because they're like, oh, we need to control the population, but don't tell anybody. Like, <laughs> oh my God. And people think that's crazy, but we've already done shit like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I don't what believe in eugenics forcing eugenics or whatever. I don't believe in forcing yeah. anybody yeah. to do anything. When the fuck did we do that? We no did that to people? There were no, there were experiments about. where we've injected people with things to see how they go. Where we lie to them, the government did that. Uh, we've sprayed poison into certain you know into in the air in certain towns to examine what would happen. And this was all during. This the sounds cult. like Kim Trails talk. No, 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 no. There, there's like look up the Tuskegee. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing. Are you, are you, it. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Doug. Maybe you can pull it up on the screen. It's on Google. It the, must be true. Uh, no, no, the Tuskegee. <laughs> Uh, experiments, which the U.S. government actually formally apologized uh, for doing this, but where they actually took black prisoners and they injected them with syphilis to see what would happen. In, in no d- shit. Yes. God, yes. T U S I didn't get that email. Yeah. No. It's it's uh well it's a, it's yeah. legit. Uh, here it is. Tuskegee syphilis experiment. This was a study. Uh, conducted between 1932 and 1972 by the U.S. Public Health Service. So what is the study? Tell me. Read it. Wow. Uh, well, let me see. Yeah, just because you said that and you, co- you connected those, tell me what the study says. Uh, so let's see. They um, It was an infamous clinical study. The purpose of the study was to observe the natural progression of untreated syphilis in rural African-American men in Alabama. Oh, never mind. They weren't even, excuse me, they weren't even prisoners. They were free men, but they told them they were giving them free health care and they gave them syphilis. Oh to watch shit! Again. Ah. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. This yep. is this You're is cured. This with is STDs. legit. So there's a there's a couple things that we've done and Let's under the you know to, to save the, for the public good, and this is not the only one by the way. Yeah. Um, there's some crazy shit that we've. Why don't know. we created Lyme disease? Right. Oh, I don't In know. About yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. Totally. About that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. yeah. Conspiracy. Come on, man! I'm trying to feed you. Conspiracy here. Monday. Yeah. Here. Here it is. <laughs> no, I don't trust anybody to force. Me or anybody else to do anything. Well, I think that's something that we all agree right. on. Uh, I, whether I don't know if you want to call that our political stance. I think that's one that we all are for sure on the same side. Yeah. That I don't think anything should be no. that way. I think no. that's really silly. I think it'd be pretty amazing, and all the way to where the you hope are. people make educated decisions about it. Dude, but yeah, you want them to have a free gotta, choice until you I mean, harm you gotta, somebody else, right? You got to I mean, keep in mind because people think, oh, because we're evil, right? Part of it, yeah, we made some evil decisions, but a lot of it is. Imagine if you're like the CIA, right, or the NSA, or these large government agencies that kind of are above the law a little bit because they they exist kind of behind the shadows, which is true. The CIA does a lot of shit that they don't need necessarily approval for and stuff. And you're looking at these existential threats, right? So you're the CIA, you're trying to protect the U.S., and you're like, okay, we may have this big breakout of this disease, or oh shit, we're in the Cold War. They're pointing nukes at us. We need to come up with like strategies, and they're going to say, okay, well, we need to test this stuff. They'll never approve this test. Well, you know what we're going to do? Uh-huh. We're going to do it over here mm. because it's for the greater good. Like, yeah. there's a lot. Like, look up, some <laughs> look decisions. up. We'll just kill this small country over here because nobody knows about that. Dude, <laughs> look up. This is Fuck. another. Here's another true, real run, totally. real one that they, uh, the Freedom of Information Act, you know, got all this th- stuff revealed. Uh, Operation Northwoods. Have you guys ever read about that? No, but I did so, just read about some other crazy shit that was ha- happening out in the ocean. This was not that long ago. Oh, I don't know. They were blowing shit up. They caught it on the. They caught. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing some crazy so, nuclear testing. So, Arpera- oh, here he goes. He looked it up. Arp- Operation Northwoods, which is real, and it was approved by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, this was under President Kennedy, I believe, was to conduct, this was a plan to conduct a fake terrorist attack in Miami. So, the U.S. government would do a terrorist attack in Miami and blame Cuban uh, rebels or whatever, or, or Cubans, because, of course, remember we had, remember the Cuban Missile Crisis and all yeah. that? Yeah. Blame them so that the U.S. public would support an invasion of Cuba. Mm. The only reason why this didn't get go through is because the president refused to sign on it. But it was it was like went up all wow. the way up the chain of command, and he said no. But it was a real thing. 
trip off that shit. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. So you want them to force shit on us? No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've thoroughly freaked you out or pissed you off. <laughs> or both. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Probably yeah. both. both. Well, we're all safe because Donald Trump's president. Yeah. So we're they, fine. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Remember, we're just fine. On your, on your way out, make sure to leave a five-star <laughs> review. Yeah. 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 Hey, if you go to mindpumpmedia.com, 30 days of coaching is still available and it's still absolutely free. Also, you can find us on Instagram. That's where you can ask us these questions. Mind Pump Media. Or you can find my personal page at Mind Pump Sal. Adam's at Mind Pump Adam. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at MindPumpMedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>